Hi, I'm Jose, and Carol's behind the camera. Hi, guys. Welcome to our channel, We Love Saltwater. If you're a new boater or you're planning on buying your first boat, I'd like to take you along and show you how we're prepared before going out on a boating trip. The very first thing that I like to do the night before is I like to get a checklist together. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the things that we take along uh, every time we go out on a boating trip. However, you should check your Coast Guard website to make sure that you have all the equipment that is needed in the area that you're going to be boating. All right, first of all, my checklist is always a first aid kit um, with enough uh, stuff in it for the amount of people that are going to be on the boat. Always take a two-way radio. This particular one floats and it's water resistant. Sometimes you get out of range uh, from cell phone service. The radio will always work. I always take along some flares. These flares can be seen during the day and especially at night. Uh, and I think these are very necessary to have on the boat in case of an emergency. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier for, for uh, help to find you if you get stranded out on the water. I always keep one of these blow horns because they're very loud. Sometimes other boaters can't hear the horn on your boat because of the sound of the engine or maybe even the wind. This sound travels a long way. I also have a, I prepared a little canister here um, this has uh, some quick connects for anchor line. I've got some zip ties and some bungees. This thing comes in handy. You can do so many things with it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some additional stuff that I keep in the, uh, in the other storage compartment. Again, all this stuff that you have, all the safety equipment, you wanna keep it in a dry storage area. In our particular boat, um, it came with a live well, which we don't use because it doesn't work very well. So I converted this live well into a dry storage. I put all this stuff in here because I know it's going to stay dry. Amongst other things in here, I've got some towels. I keep my propane tank uh, for, my, for my little grill. I've got also some uh, aerators where we keep our live bait in a, in a five gallon bucket. Uh, there's a lot of space in here to put stuff. Right, I'll show you now what's inside the compartment. Okay, in here, in the state of Florida, it's mandatory to have your boat registration uh, inside your boat. What I've done is I basically got a zip tie, uh, a Ziploc bag um, that's water resistant, and I've got my boat registration in here in case I get pulled over by law enforcement. Um, mandatory to have on your boat always is your navigation lights. Um, this is the one that goes in the front of the boat and the one that goes in the back of the boat I also have in here Inside this compartment I also keep the uh, dock ropes I got my tackle box in here with all the tackle that I'm going to need In this particular case we're planning on uh, hitting the sandbar after we go out fishing So I have my grill in here as well and then I have two anchors if you're a navigation tablet, uh, navigation, GPS, fish finder, um, whatever you want to call it, if it's removable, you might want to put that on also the day before. In addition to, to the uh, rest of the stuff that I showed you that we keep in the compartments before we go out boating for safety, you must have a Coast Guard approved fire extinguisher for your size boat. I keep mine right underneath the center console here. It's got a quick release on it in case of emergency. Some of the other things on this checklist is I check the tire pressure on my tires to make sure that the tire pressure is correct. Um, I also check the, the dust cover on the grease hub. Um, these dust covers go bad uh, every now and again because they are rubber. Uh, when they go bad, it allows the salt water to get in there and it starts corroding. As a matter of fact, I just replaced these last week. All right, I also want to go ahead and on my list is to fill the gas tank. Um, every time I fill up my gas tank, I put, a, I put in this stable additive. Uh, it controls ethanol and it keeps your fuel system clean. And you do save a little bit of gas if you use this. Now in addition to that, some people wait till they get to the marina to do this. I like to do this at home before we even take off. I like to put my drain plugs in. All right, in my particular boat, I have two drain plugs. Um, the one for the hull is brass. Um, keep a spare of those always on the boat and keep them lubricated. Okay, this particular one is for the bilge. Um, this one is spring-loaded. 
Um, as you can see, it's, it's made of rubber and, and brass. You want to keep a couple of spares of these because these things go bad. And it's always good to have a spare. All right, in addition to that, you want to check your lighting connections. Especially inspect these. As you can see, this one's already beginning to break. I had to put some electrical tape on it. Let me get closer so they can see. You want to keep these clean and lubricated. There's a spray that I use for electrical connectors. I spray it after every use. All right, guys, we're already hooked up on uh, the trailer. One thing I wanted to mention is uh, you want to make sure that the size of ball that you have on your truck matches the tongue on the trailer, very important. And also you want to make sure that this latches down correctly and put some kind of a lock on it to avoid this clip from coming up. We're going to go ahead and connect the lights. And let's go to the back. Oh, you also you want to make sure your chains are connected and you want to hook up these chains in a crisscross pattern. The right to the left and the left to the right. And let's go around the back, make sure these lights are working. As you can see, I got the left working correctly and the right. And now we're ready to go. All right, guys, we just got to the marina. This is what I was talking about. You want to start getting your stuff ready before you get to the boat ramp. Get the stuff out of your truck, everything that belongs in the boat. You want to do it before you get to the ramp. for the center bar, our snorkels, and very important, the seat cushion. You want to go ahead and take off your straps. And if you have a transom saver, you want to go ahead and remove that as well. Right after you got your boat loaded up, uh, you want to get your dock ropes ready. And at this point, I go ahead and, uh, oh, I forgot one strap here. And go ahead and release the, um, the, safety, uh, the safety clamp off the trailer. Are you ready to go to the ramp, babe? I'm ready. All right, let's go. As you can see, we're now at the boat ramp. Let's go ahead and release the boat. First mate already has her dock ropes ready. Just wait for her signal to back up. All right, let's go ahead and back it up. And 
there he goes. He's ready to go park the trailer. All right, we parked the truck and the trailer. We went ahead and paid for parking already. And now we're heading out to the water. Nice, beautiful weekday out here. There's no one here. Well, there's a few people out here. But not as busy as the weekend. And here he comes. I already got the engine going and everything set up. So we're just waiting for El Capitan and we'll be taking off in a minute. All right, so we just took off from the marina. Hey guys, we're getting back to the marina. I'm gonna give you a quick show of what we do um, to get the trailer back on. I mean, the boat back on the trailer. As you can see, there's not many people here today. It's great. There was a little bit of current though. Uh, you always want to make sure as soon as you get back to uh, back to the dock, you want to trim your engine up so you won't forget uh, that it's trimmed down as you pull the boat out. up the trailer and as you can see the guide poles are very helpful and that looks like it's perfect When you're done pulling your boat out of the water, you basically just want to do the opposite of what you did when you got to the marina. Put your straps back on, take off your drain plugs, and take everything that might fly off the boat in the hall in the highway off the boat. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the uh, drain plugs off and start draining the boat. Go ahead and reinstall the transom saver bracket. Up on the other side.
where I this strap didn't actually come with the bolt but I always put it on just to help with the bounce whenever you hit potholes and stuff like that They're all strapped up and you got everything out of the boat. You're ready to hit the road. All right, guys, we're back from our boating trip. And the very first thing you should do when you get back home or wherever you park your boat is to flush your engine. You need to get yourself a set of ears. These come in different sizes and shapes. Get the right one for your engine. I like to install these from the front of the engine in order to avoid it from falling off with the vibration. You want to make sure, very important, to install the rubbers right where the water intake is, right down here. And you basically just slide them on. You get your hose connected. And turn the water on. It's a good practice to let that water run for, for about five to 10 seconds. Make sure you got enough pressure going into the engine. Right, after you turn the water on, you want to make sure that you saw the guy kind of moved a little bit. Make sure it's still where, where it should be, right where the water intake is. And then basically just turn your engine on and let it run for about five to ten minutes. So you want to make sure that when you got your engine running, that the water's coming out of what we call the pee hole to be coming out with some pretty good pressure. Gonna let that run for about five to ten minutes. All right guys, so the engine's been running for about ten minutes with the water running through it. Very important, turn your engine off before you turn your water off. All right guys, after you're done flushing your engine, it's a good practice to take off your cowl or your engine cover. I want to show you guys something. There's a lot of salt that accumulates in here after a day boating out in salt water. If you can show them a little bit of detail of the salt in there. Wow, that's a lot of salt. Yeah, okay, what you wanna do is you wanna lightly rinse that salt out of there. You don't wanna wet any of the electrical components. So basically you get yourself something, uh, a nozzle, very light spray, and start flushing that salt out of there. I can't believe how much salt actually accumulates on that. I've never seen that myself. Now, don't worry about the water. Um, the engine does have some drain holes in the front and the back. Another thing you could do is you could actually uh, tilt your engine upward a little bit. And it'll help the water run. See how the water drains out. It comes out through the front. It also has some more drain holes back here. You want to do this every time you come back because that starts that salt starts to stick on there. It makes it a lot tougher to get it off. Alright guys, after you're done rinsing the inside of it, after it drains all the water out, uh, it's a good practice to get a marine, uh, some marine lubricant would be the best. If you don't have marine lubricant, uh, some WD-40 will work just fine. You basically just lightly spray it all over, put your cover back on, and you're good to go. Alright, so that concludes this video. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button, uh, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more boating videos. Thanks for watching, guys.